you know, the, tra the Christian tradition has classically named the powers of, um, of money, sex, and power. And uh, I think those uh, continue to be things that we're uh, addicted to because they're connected to what, you know, John calls the, uh, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the, uh, and the, the desire of life or this desire to kind of be in charge of everything. Uh, I think uh, as, as a people, uh, Christians in America uh, are addicted to being in charge. Um, we're just used to thinking that uh, we ought to get to run things. And it makes it terribly difficult for us to understand uh, uh, why Jesus didn't just get more stuff done. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, after all, he was the son of God. Uh, couldn't he have hired some better middle managers? Uh, that kind of thing. And, uh, uh, and, and, I, and I think that, that means we just write off um, most of the profound stuff Jesus says as uh, unreasonable. You know, the Sermon on the Mount is kind of a, a nice uh, bar that shows us uh, that none of us can jump over it so we need some help or something. Uh, but rather, I mean, G Jesus is trying to reveal to us a, a, a whole new way to live when we're set free from our addictions. Uh, yet we're so caught up in them uh, um, that we use his words to, uh, to to prop it up, and and we're we're addicted to um, we're addicted to a sense of self-control, you know, that um, that we've got this thing figured out. Uh, we even work we even work the scripture so that uh, the scriptures uh, that are meant to set us free from our need to fix our own problem end up being a kind of a system to fix our own problem. <laughs> so that, you know, in its furthest extreme, uh, in the Protestant gospel, what we say is, <clears throat> you don't have to do anything to receive God's love, except this one thing, which is accept and profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Uh, I, I mean, you know, it, it, I mean, it's, it's almost a, uh, it's almost a comedy, um, but we, but we're able. I think because of our addiction to be in control, we're able to turn the message of grace into uh, a, a real simple thing you can do. Just one thing, right? <laughs> like just walk the aisle, or just say this prayer, or or, or whatever we reduce it to. When, uh, when as a matter of fact, um, uh, like every addict, uh, the hardest thing is for us to um, to let go and to, uh, to come to the end of our rope and to say that we have no hope except that we've been loved. And when we're loved, that, um, that embrace um, can be frightening. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like a person who's so broken that when you hug them, you know, they, they wriggle out of the hug. Uh, we're all like that when God tries to embrace us. And yet when we, when we learn to to just sit there and receive God's love. I think that love is transformative. Uh, it changes us. It convinces us that there is another power in the universe and that it, and that it can transform us and that it can make it possible for us to do these, these crazy things that Jesus said, not because we're some kind of uh, uh, superhuman people, but because, uh, because love, God's love, in us and in the church has an incredible power uh, to change things. I think that's... Uh, yeah, I think that's what freedom from the addiction to, um, to control looks like.